Welcome to Scoop Canada, your source for uncovering the truth behind Canadian politics. Today, we're exposing the cozy relationship between the Trudeau government and the Saskatchewan NDP. Last week, the SKNDP leader flew to Ottawa for a meeting aimed at strategizing to ensure the re-election of the Trudeau NDP government. This collaboration raises serious questions about the independence of the NDP and its commitment to representing the interests of Saskatchewan residents. Trudeau's preference for the NDP in Saskatchewan suggests a political alliance aimed at consolidating power rather than serving the needs of the Canadian people. This maneuver further undermines the credibility of the Liberal Party and reinforces concerns about political manipulation and backroom deals. Join the conversation and share your thoughts on this concerning development. How do you feel about the Trudeau government's influence over the Saskatchewan NDP? Is this a betrayal of the party's principles or simply politics as usual? Let's hold our leaders accountable and demand transparency in Canadian politics. Stay tuned for more updates on this developing story. Before we move further, take a minute to visit our website, sign the petition demanding Justin Trudeau leave the office immediately and sign up for our newsletters to get uncensored news in Canadian politics. Trudeau's latest move seems to have put Legault in a tight spot. Despite lagging in the polls, Trudeau is resorting to a classic strategy attempting to sway voters with promises funded by taxpayers' money. Winning elections isn't about bolstering the military or enhancing diplomatic efforts. It's about addressing the everyday concerns of citizens, financial security, housing, and food. Trudeau's recent initiatives such as child meals, tenant rights, and dental care reflect this approach. However, Trudeau's push for federal initiatives comes at a time when the Quebec government emphasizes its autonomy and seeks to assert itself within Canada. This poses a dilemma for Legault and the KQ who have advocated for a third way emphasizing Quebec's autonomy within the Federation. Now, faced with Trudeau's federal initiatives, Legault must navigate the delicate balance between asserting Quebec's autonomy and addressing the needs of Quebecers. The tension between federal and provincial responsibilities is brought to the forefront, raising questions about the future direction of Quebec's relationship with the federal government. As Trudeau ramps up his efforts to woo voters with federal initiatives, it remains to be seen how Legault and the Keiki will respond to this challenge to Quebec's autonomy. In a telling display of evasion, Justin Trudeau sidestepped Laura Stone's question about why he refuses to step down, despite Pierre Polyev's commanding lead and widespread public dissatisfaction with his leadership. Trudeau's reluctance to address the issue directly speaks volumes about his detachment from the reality of his precarious position. Instead of acknowledging the legitimate concerns of Canadians and the urgent need for change within the Liberal Party, Trudeau resorted to vague platitudes about investing in jobs and future generations. As you see, we're here investing in good jobs for today and for generations to come. This evasion tactic is emblematic of Trudeau's leadership style, characterized by a lack of accountability and transparency. Trudeau's refusal to confront the stark realities facing his party further underscores his detachment from the concerns of everyday Canadians. With Polyev surging in the polls and public sentiment turning against him, Trudeau's obstinance only serves to exacerbate the Liberal Party's woes. Trudeau's reluctance to step down despite mounting pressure highlights his prioritization of personal ambition over the well-being of the party and the country as his popularity continues to plummet and dissatisfaction with his leadership reaches new heights. Trudeau's stubbornness threatens to further undermine the Liberal Party's chances of electoral success. In the face of growing calls for his resignation, Trudeau's refusal to take responsibility for his failure speaks volumes about his character and suitability for leadership. Justin Trudeau faced pointed questions about his plummeting public approval, disconnect on key issues, and a significant polling deficit behind the Conservatives. However, Trudeau's response was emblematic of his evasiveness and lack of accountability. Instead of directly addressing the concerns raised by the reporter, Trudeau resorted to tired rhetoric, repeating jobs as if it were a panacea for all his political woes. His reliance on buzzwords and deflection tactics only served to underscore his disconnect from the pressing issues facing Canadians. Furthermore, Trudeau's attempt to shift blame onto the oil and gas industry smacks of desperation and a refusal to take responsibility for his own shortcomings. By deflecting attention away from his own failings, Trudeau only reinforces the perception that he is out of touch with the concerns of ordinary Canadians. Trudeau's evasive response to the reporter's question speaks volumes about his unwillingness to confront the harsh realities of his political predicament. As his popularity continues to plummet and his party faces mounting electoral challenges, 
Trudeau's refusal to acknowledge his own failings only serves to further erode public trust in his leadership. In the face of growing discontent and calls for his resignation, Trudeau's failure to offer a meaningful response only deepens the sense of disillusionment among Canadians. It's clear that Trudeau's leadership is no longer tenable, and it's time for him to step aside and make way for new leadership that is capable of addressing the pressing challenges facing the country. According to recent data from Statistics Canada on employment by worker class, Canada witnessed a notable decline in the number of construction workers plummeting from approximately 1,600,900 to 1,589,800 in just a single month between March and April. This staggering loss of roughly 11,100 construction workers coincided with the unveiling of Trudeau's 2024 federal budget, which boldly pledged to construct 4 million new houses within a span of seven years of Herculean task that demands swift and substantial construction efforts. Trudeau's ambitious housing initiative comes at a critical juncture when Canada is grappling with pressing housing challenges, including soaring prices, limited affordability, and housing shortages across various regions. While the promise of constructing millions of new homes holds promise for addressing these issues, the recent decline in construction workers raises concerns about the feasibility and execution of such an ambitious plan. Moreover, the annual data spanning from April 2023 to April 2024 paints a nuanced picture of Canada's employment landscape. Despite modest progress in sectors like public administration, service jobs, support services, and information and culture jobs, significant job growth remains elusive in pivotal sectors such as construction, utilities, agriculture, manufacturing, and real estate. These sectors either witness stagnation or experience declines in job growth, highlighting the uneven distribution of employment gains across the economy. One of the most striking trends highlighted by the data is the dominance of the public sector in driving overall job growth. With a notable increase of 4.9%, public administration and related services emerged as the primary source of employment gains during the specified period. While this expansion underscores the government's efforts to bolster public services and support infrastructure development, it also raises questions about the sustainability and balance of job creation across different sectors. Furthermore, the employment landscape is intricately intertwined with Canada's immigration policies, particularly concerning the influx of new immigrants into the labor market. Despite gaining 41,000 jobs in February 2024, Canada experienced a rise in the unemployment rate, primarily due to immigration outpacing job growth. This phenomenon underscores the challenges posed by mass immigration on labor market dynamics, including competition for employment opportunities and wage pressures. A deeper dive into the data reveals concerning trends regarding the quality and nature of employment opportunities in Canada. While full-time employment saw a modest increase of 1.6% between February 2023 and February 2024, part-time employment surged by 3% during the same period, a nearly double rate of growth. This disparity underscores the prevalence of low-wage, precarious employment, particularly among new immigrants who often find themselves relegated to part-time positions with limited benefits and stability. The rise of part-time employment has significant implications for workers' financial security, career advancement, and overall well-being. It exacerbates income inequality, limits access to essential benefits like healthcare and retirement savings, and perpetuates cycles of poverty and economic insecurity. More overseas of Canadian politics, questions arise about the integrity of political alliances and the priorities of our leaders. Join the conversation and share your thoughts on these developments. Your voice matters in shaping the future of our country.